Hello and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the first of six videos in a playlist on ANOVA and related concepts. Depending on when you are viewing this, the others may not be available yet. To get the latest status, see the videos page on the book's website. As usual, in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, and then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. The first key to understanding is, ANOVA is an acronym for analysis of variance. However, its objective is to determine if one or more of the means of several groups is different from the others. The second KTU is the assumptions or test requirements are that the groups have a roughly normal distribution and then the groups have similar variances. Key to understanding number three states, there are three types of ANOVA. One way, also known as single factor, two way or two factor without replication, and two way or two factor with replication. The fourth KTU is ANOVA is often used in designed experiments. In an ANOVA table, is often an output in multiple linear regression analysis. In the fifth and final key to understanding, we'll explain what ANOVA does and does not do using this table. Now let's begin our detailed explanation of each key to understanding. KTU number one says, ANOVA is an acronym for analysis of variance. However, its objective is to determine if one or more of the means of several groups is different from the others to a statistically significant degree. First of all, what is a group? Group here is a generic term for a set of data. It can refer to a population or process for which we have complete data or a sample taken from a population or process. But if ANOVA is about means, why is it called analysis of variance? Granted, this can be confusing, but there is an explanation. First, there is another statistical analysis called analysis of means, or ANAM, and that will be the subject of a separate video in this playlist. Second, the internal calculations in ANOVA makes use of variances. The diagram at the bottom of this slide shows the flow of the calculations in ANOVA. This is explained in detail in the ANOVA Part 2 video. The variances are the terms MSB and MSW. These are mean sums of squares calculated from the groups of data. KTU number two lays out the two assumptions that the data must meet if ANOVA is to be used. The data distribution for each group must be roughly normal, and there should be roughly equal variances. ANOVA is fairly tolerant about meeting these requirements, but if these assumptions are not even roughly met, then the non-parametric Kruskal-Wallis test can be used instead. There are three types of ANOVA. There is one way, also known as single factor, and then there are two types of ANOVA for two factors, two-way without replication or two-way with replication. One way is covered in the ANOVA Part 3 article. There is one factor, the x variable, which affects the value of the outcome variable y. The two-way methods are covered in the Part 4 article. There are two factors which affect the value of the output outcome variable y. Key to understanding number four says ANOVA is often used in designed experiments, and an ANOVA table is often 
and output in multiple linear regression. Design of experiments in multiple linear regression are fairly complicated concepts, and we won't try to explain them here. The book has several articles on each, and there will be several videos. Suffice it to say for now that an ANOVA table is used by both in studying the effects of the individual factors. This compare and contrast table is a handy summary of what ANOVA does and does not do. It does compare several means with each other. It does not compare several means with the overall mean. You can use ANAM instead for that. It does say whether or not there is a statistically significant difference among several means, but it does not say which mean or means differ. ANAM or confidence intervals can help with that. It does require continuous or measurement data. It does not handle discrete data like counts. It uses the chi-square test of the variance instead. It does require roughly normal distributions. It does not handle very non-normal distributions. Use the Kriskal wallace test instead. It does require similar group variances. It does not handle very unequal sample sizes and variances. When you have unequal sample variances, this can be mitigated by using equal sample sizes. Here is a list of related videos I have planned. Depending on when you are viewing this video, some of these may not yet be completed. See the videos page of the book's website for the latest status. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.